Okay, so this is going to be the notes for chapter 5, section 1. The name of the section is Using Properties of Exponents. This is something you've done before. Uh, bear with us in this first video. We'll see how this goes. Hopefully it's uh, not too boring for you. But we will go through these notes. You fill them in and bring questions that you have tomorrow when we get to work in class. So the objective for today is to determine what degree of accuracy is reasonable for measurements in a given situation. That is where scientific notation comes in. That's not just with the properties of exponents that we have, but with uh, that's with the scientific notation. So the vocabulary that we're going to talk about today is a number is expressed in scientific notation. This is something that you've probably been familiar with before. If it is in the form of c times 10 to the n power, and notice this is really important right here where it says 1 is less than or equal to c, which is less than 10. That means that this number right here has to be between 1 and 10. It can't be anything else. Otherwise, it's not really in scientific notation. But before we get into this, we just want to review some properties of, exp of exponents. We have all of our rules here. And hopefully these will be familiar to you. The first one is the product of powers property. That is if you have a base, A, it can be anything. It can be a number. It can be a variable. And then the powers are M and then N. And if you're multiplying these two together where the base is the same, the property is, is that you can take the exponents and add them together. So it would be A to the M plus N. A power of a power property is where you have a base and a power on the inside of a parenthesis and then another power on the outside. And the property of this would be A, and then it's going to be multiplied. So it would be M times N. The next property is the power of a product property. That's if you have a product inside a parenthesis and then a exponent or a power on the outside. Basically, the rule here is, is that if you have a power on the outside of a parenthesis, that has to be applied to everything on the inside, no matter what it is, if it's a number, a variable, anything. So here we would have a to the n power times b to the n power. The next property is the negative exponent property. This is probably the most mistaken property and the most forgotten property that there is. Typically, whenever you have negative exponents, we always need to get rid of that negative exponent. So we can't just you know, eliminate it and do whatever we want with it. There is a property with it that whenever you have a negative exponent, you are going to bring that entire base and power as a reciprocal. You're going to flip it to the opposite side of where it's at. In this case, it's already on the top of a fraction, which means it's over 1. So we will write this to get rid of the negative exponent. It is 1 over a, and now we can eliminate the negative power. The big mistake that I usually see or that I see students make on this is they usually leave it as a to the negative m even though they bring it to the bottom. Remember, we're trying to eliminate the negative exponent. The next property, the zero exponent property, is probably one of the easiest ones to remember. Anything to the zero power will always be one. Notice for the last two, a is not allowed to be equal to zero. The quotient of powers is basically the opposite of what the uh, product of powers property is, and that's if you have a quotient, you are going to simply subtract. So it will be a to the m minus n. And then the last one is the power of a quotient property. That kind of works the same as the parentheses up here. The, the power has to be applied to everything inside the parentheses. So we will have a to the m divided by b to the m. So now, what we have is a few examples that I want to go over, and we're going to fly through these pretty quickly because I know most of this is a review. So we have 3 to the 3rd power times 3 to the 5th power. And I'm going to write this out so that way you can see exactly the, you can see the property in motion here. So we have 3 to the 3 plus 5 because this is the property of the product of powers property. So 3 to the 3 plus 5, we just do 3 plus 5, and we write it as 3 to the 8. We do not need to put this in a calculator and write it as a number. This is completely sufficient. Example two is a power of a power property. So one way that I want to show you this is 
is basically why this property works. Now, obviously, with the new property that we just talked about, we can say it's x to the 4 times 3, which is x to the 12. That's fine. But I also want to show you, think, about, think of it this way. If we have x to the 4th power to the 3rd power, that's the same thing as saying x to the 4th power 3 times. So we could technically write this like this, x to the 4th times x to the 4th times x to the 4th. And then when you go through and add those using the property we use in example one, it's still x to the 12th. It's just that this property down here is much quicker. So we can just use the multiplication property to get x to the 12th. In example three, we have a couple of properties in, in motion here. And it actually doesn't matter which order you do this in. We can either apply the power to the, on the outside to the inside first, or we can do our uh, quotient property first and then apply the power. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and apply the power first to the inside. So it will look something like this. x to the third times 5 and then x squared times 5. That will equal x to the 15th divided by x to the 10th. And now we use our quotient property to say x to the 15th minus 10, which will be x to the fifth. Okay, so the next one is very similar, but this one is going to be, it, we're going to end up with a negative exponent here. But one thing that I want to show you is, again, why the power uh, of a quotient property works. So the other way we could do this is everyone should know that y to the fifth is y times y five times. So one way you could look at this is you could write all of these out. On the bottom, we'll have eight of them. And then what you can see happens is, now I'm not saying you want to do it this long way, but you can see how this works. Watch what happens. We have y's start canceling out. And we're actually left over with three y's on the bottom. So we'd have a one on the top, and we'd have y to the third on the bottom. But watch how this works if we use our properties. We will have y to the fifth minus eight. This will equal y to the negative third. But we've said our rule is, is we cannot leave a negative exponent. So we need to create a fraction where this will be on the bottom now, and we will eliminate our negative exponent. So our answer here is, 1 over y to the third. We always have to get rid of negative exponents. Okay, so why don't you pause this video, and why don't you try and do this one? This is a pretty tough problem, but why don't you try and do it on your own before I actually give you the solution? Okay, now that you've had a, try, a chance to try and do this on your own, let's see if you get it right. And if you didn't understand it, that's okay. You can still follow along with this and write down the solution. So. Again, anything on the outside of a parentheses, we always apply to the inside. So I'm going to do that first. Again, you may have done it in a different order, but that's okay. So we have x squared times 3. We have y to the negative 2 times 3 on top. And on the bottom, we have x to the 3rd times 3. And we have y to the 6th times 3. So this ends up being x to the 6th, y to the negative 6th, then we have x to the 9th, and y to the 18th. Now we can use our quotient property. So we have x to the 6th minus 9, that's our quotient, and we have y to the negative 6th minus 18. So this leaves us with x to the negative third and y to the negative 24th. So what you see here is we still have two bases with negative exponents, so we have to fix this. So because both of them are negative, we have to bring them both to the bottom of a fraction. So the one will stay on top because there's nothing to leave on top. And the x to the third, notice again, the negative is not there anymore. And y to the 24th. So hopefully that's a good review 
of our exponent properties. We're going to move on to some scientific notation stuff now. Okay, so scientific notation is used when you're dealing with really large numbers, so we don't have to put a lot of commas and zeros. Uh, you'll do this a lot in science class, but we're just going to go over a couple of examples. It's really simple to use, so we're just going to fly through this pretty quickly here. So in this example right here, it says Iceland covers about 1.03 times 10 to the fifth square kilometers and has approximately 2.94 times 10 to the fifth people. About how many people are there per square kilometer? Well, we're just going to set this up as a regular fraction. The population will go on top, so that will be 2.94 times 10 to the fifth. And on the bottom will be the land area, which is 1.03 times 10 to the fifth. Okay, so we're, we're just going to divide this out. So we're going to do this in two separate things. We're going to use the quotient of powers property with these. So it's going to be 10 to the 5 minus 5, which is equal to 10 to the 0. And then we're going to divide these two to figure out what this decimal is. So doing it in the calculator, 2.94 divided by 1.03 is actually 2.85. Now, if we look above to our quotient of powers property, we have 10 to the 0. 10 to the 0 is 1. So therefore, we just have 2.85 times 1. So there are about 2.85 people per square kilometer. Okay, real simple. So the idea is when you're dealing with scientific notation, as you're going to see in this example we're going to do right now, you take the number and multiply it by the number or divide it by the number, and you deal with the exponents separately. So here, we have 6.3 and 2.3. We will simply do 6.3 times 2.3 is one thing, and we will do 10 to the negative 6 times 10 to the 9 as our other thing. So we will keep these separate. We'll still put a multiplication sign in between at the end, but for right now, we're just going to multiply. 6.3 times 2.3 is 14.49 rounded and 10 to the 6 or negative 6 times 10 to the 9th is going to be 10 to the 3rd. All we're doing is adding negative 6 to 9. Now we are not done yet. We've got to be real careful here because notice this number right here is not between 1 and 10. So we need to move this decimal place 1 to the left to make sure it's in scientific notation. So when we do that, we have 1.449, but we still, we cannot just leave it as 10 to the third. Because we moved it one to the left, you've got to add an extra exponent to make up for that. So notice, for us to get back to, remember when we multiply by 10 to the third, we're actually moving a decimal place in uh, the direction to the right. So if we move the decimal to the left, we've got to add an exponent here. So this will now be 10 to the fourth instead. So now that we actually turn this into a number that's between 1 and 10, we had to make sure that we changed our exponent appropriately. If we would have had to move the decimal place to the right, then we would be subtracting exponents. So that is a real quick overview of scientific notation, but that's a pretty easy process. So hopefully, uh, this made sense. If you have to rewatch it, rewatch it, but bring your questions tomorrow.